Shabbat Shalom, Senbet Salam. This is the 40th weekly Torah portion or parsha in the Hebrew or Kufal Bamarinya. We call it the Rastafari Sabbatical Studies or Sabbath Studies, the RSS number 40. RSS number 40, named Balak. Balak, uh, Balak, or in the Hebrew, Balak, and it's the Torah or the Ori portion, Numbers 22 and 2 to Numbers 25 and 9, from Numbers 22 and 2 to Numbers 25 and 9. Now, what is contained? What is contained in this Torah portion? What's contained in this reading and feeding from Numbers 22 and 2, beginning at Numbers 22 and 2? First of all, the, there's the name Balak, Balak, Balak. And it's the second word and the first distinctive word in the, in the Kufl, in the portion. And it's the 40th weekly Orit or Torah portion in the annual Hebraic cycle of Orit Minbab or Orit Nibab. Nibab means reading and Orit is the Ethiopic Torah. And this reading, Balak, is the seventh in the book of Numbers and it constitutes Numbers chapter 22 and 2 to Numbers 25 and 9 and, and Hebrews and um, religious Jews in the diaspora generally read it in uh, late uh, June or early July. Now, as we mentioned before in the audio version of this particular um, parasha, Kufl, that the Luni uh, Solar or the Hebraic um, Ethiopic calendar contains up to um, 55 weeks and the exact number varies um, depending on the years. And in most years, for example, 2010, 2011, 12, 13, 14, and 15, this particular kufl name Balak, or um, Balak, as uh, some would say the soft cave of Balak, is read separately. But in some years, for example, in 2009 or in, in 2009, this uh, kufl, this portion, Balak, is combined with the previous kufl, which is known as hukat, hukat, um, to help achieve the appropriate number of uh, weekly readings. But let's just go through an overview and deal with some of the basic uh, contents, uh, summary of the contents for this particular Torah scroll reading. So let's get our Metaf Kedus, our scriptures, as well as our copy books to take good notes. Um, during our studies. And let us um, remember the Senbet and keep it Yetzek Kedeset holy. Remember this and not get caught up in the so called uh, uh, Gentile and Goyim perversion that's known as the weak end. Don't be weak end, but be strengthened with the sabbatical readings and the feedings. Now, the summary of uh, this particular Torah reading, Balak, which begins at uh, the second verse of chapter 22 of Numbers, it continues the march of the Beta Israel. The march of the Beta Israel is continued here. And this is the fourth part of this march that concerns um, Balaam, Balaam or Bela'am, Bela'am. Now, there's a New Testament um, reference here to 2 Peter chapter 2 and 15 and uh, Jude uh, verse 11 or Yehuda Melekit Kutas uh, Ra'an verse 11 and Revelation chapter 2 verse uh, 14. Revelation chapter 2 verse 14 and it begins in Balak the son of uh, Zippor saw all that Israel had done to the Amorite. So he saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. Now, who is Balak? We learn that Balak, he was the son of Zippor, or, or Sephor, and he was the king of the Moabites at that particular time. Now, 
if you know your biblical um, like genealogy, you would know that the Moabites and the Israelites were like sort of like cousins. So they were related, you know, related culturally and even um, eth according to ethnicity, you understand, they were related peoples. And I mention this because it's much like us as the, the black Jews or the black Hebrews over here in the diaspora, in the Americas, in the Caribbean, and the Lek Rastafari, when we speak about Africa, or we speak about ourselves as African American and the relation of Africa, and there's a lot of talk that the well, the Africans don't accept us as African, and you know, and this and that about the African, in order to discourage us from our promised land and to discourage us from coming out of this spiritual Egypt and returning into the promise of the King of Kings and his Christ. There's a lot of talk about how some Africans or African tribalists um, don't like us and definitely do not love us. This is somewhat similar to the situation with the Moabites and the Israelites or the Beta Israel at this particular time because here we have Balak the son of uh, Sephor or Zippor. He was the king of the Moabites at that time. And Moab, it says in verse 3, was so afraid of the people, of the Beta Israel, the Begik Israel, the Bane Israel, because they were many, because our numbers were many, just like our numbers even in this present day and time are many as the lost sheep and the once lost but hopefully now found. And Moab, Moab was distressed because of the children of Israel. So this whole, this whole people, these tri this tribe or nation was distressed because of the Beit Israel and what they had seen done with um, the Amorites. Because if you recall in chapter 21, Numbers 21, where the march of Israel begins, there's victory after victory. There's the incident, of course, of the serpent of brass, which is, is between the two victories, but the march begins after the death of Aaron. The death of Aaron, the footnote in the Schofield uh, Study Bible says down here on page 194, that the death of Aaron marks the end of, of the wanderings. So Aaron... Who was Aaron was the brother of uh, uh, Musa, Moses, and he was the high priest, you could say the first high priest of the, of the Hebrews of that time, of the Beit Israel from the tribe of Lewi or, or Levi. And no doubt you recall the, the golden calf of, of Hathor, of the Chit Charui, you understand, that um, he made for the people when Moses was gone for a while and the people returned, they retrograded back to their old, um, for lack of a better word, their, their niggerism. They, they're worshiping bling blingism. This is why we had did this video a couple, about a year ago or so, on the, on the golden calf and the ox and, and the silver and the gold and the bling blingism that's happening with this particular um, lost sheep of the Beta Israel or black people in the American the Caribbean at this present time. So there's still a sort of a wandering of the lost sheep, but henceforth Israel, at this particular point in, in the Orit, you understand, um, Israel's marches or halt, but it, it doesn't wander anymore. In other words, the wandering and the wanderlust in this sense ends, and it coincides with the, with the death of a very important patriarch and symbol of the people at that time, um, and this was the high priest Haron or Aaron. It, it's much similar to us as black folks. We have our particular leaders, and back in the 60s there was MLK, Martin Luther King Jr., and there was um, uh, Malcolm X and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and there were other sort of leaders in the black movement. And we can see how when these leaders died or were assassinated, as it were, we can see the different changes that happen in the direction of the people, but in a sense, this was a positive change with the death of Aaron at this particular point, and it marks the end of the wanderings, and from here, what a feat, moving forward, the Beta Israel, they march, they march, or they halt, but they do not wander. They, 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 they now are more disciplined. We can see uh, uh, increased um, vigilance and discipline 
happening with the Beit Israel and the fact that they're not wandering anymore, but they are either marching or halting. We had mentioned in the audio version of this particular um, um, RSS, uh, sabbatical uh, reading and feeding, um, we had mentioned the video, Ethiopia on the March. Please check that video out. You can go to the www.lojsociety.org and you can, you can purchase or acquire a copy there. Or you can perhaps Google it or see it on the YouTubes, maybe in portions, a video called The March of Ethiopia, or Ethiopia on the March. Actually, this, this title is Ethiopia on the March. And going over this particular section, now that we're into the marching of the Beit Israel, the victories, as well as the incident concerning the serpent of brass, it is interesting how within that time, that, that, that time space, but in the template of that time, we can also see similarities to our day and time and also to Imperial Ethiopia of the King of Kings of Moan Desazem Negeta Yehuda, Karamawi Halasalase, Siyumeg Ziyad Negus Negeza Ethiopia. But now as we move forward, as we move forward with this um, 40th, the 40th uh, reading called um, um, Balak, you understand? We find Balaam come into the picture, Belial, because Moab had said to the elders of Median, Median, remember the Medeans are also related to the Beta Israel because Musa's um, father-in-law was called a Medianite, his wife called an Ethiopian, and therefore we can see that there's a relationship here, but, and that's a positive vis-a-vis -vis this relationship with the Medianite. So we cannot look at peoples as a monolith in that particular sense because here now we're looking at the more negative aspect because Moab saying to the elders, the Shemagali watch of Median, now shall this company lick up all that are round about us as the ox licketh up the grass of the field. And Balak, the son of Zippor or Sephor, was king of the Moabites at that time. He sent messengers therefore to Beliam, the son of Beor, to uh, Futor or Petor, which is by the river of the land of the children of his people, to call him, saying, Behold, look and see, Nahu, 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 look and sight, look and see, there is a people, there is a people come out from Egypt. They're not saying these are. These are relatives of us because Lot and Abraham, and we're the children of, of Lot, and they're the children of Abraham through uh, Yisahak and Yaakov. They're not saying that. They're saying there's this, there's this people who are come out from Egypt. Behold, look and see. Nahu, Nahu, look and sight this. They cover the face of the earth, and they abide. They are dwelling over against me. They're dwelling on the other side. They're dwelling on the other side. Come now, therefore, I pray thee, curse me, this people, for they are too mighty for me. They are too mighty for me. Peradventure, I shall prevail that we may smite them. So he's saying, let's get together against this people that have come through great tribulation. Let's get together against them. This is like many of the so-called African tribalists and even certain Ethiopian or East African tribes that do not embrace us as, 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 kins, as kinsfolk because they are like the Moabites and the Medeanites in this sense at this time and we need to deal with this matter accordingly. But now, Balak, he goes on to say, Come now, therefore, I pray thee, curse me this people. He's sending a message to Beliam, the son of Beor, to uh, Futur. Now this is by the river Euphrates. This is on the other side of our promised land between the two rivers. The river of Egypt, which encompasses Ethiopia and the eastern portion of Africa, and on one end of the inheritance, and then on the other end we have Iraq, right up until Iraq, the river of the Euphrates. Between these two rivers is the promised land that was given to the seed of our father Abraham. Therefore, this is inclusive of Ethiopia and the Horn of Africa. That, that point of order needs to be understood, and not just the, the beachfront property that is called the state of Israel today. 
that's beachfront property. And they say, well, that is because that's Israel from biblical times. But remember, the Beit Israel were not obedient and only conquered a small fraction, maybe 10% of the promised land. If you look at that small piece of land and compare it between Genesis 15 and 18, what, what Genesis 15 and 18 says, Yahweh, Buruku, blessed be he, said to our father Abraham, then we'll clearly see that Ethiopia is also part of our promised land. But there are tribalists, and there's other tribes and other peoples there who, when we comprehend it, are like many of our ancient enemies. They, are, they do not embrace us. They do not worship our God. You understand? They're not in covenant with the true God of the Beta Israel, with Yahweh, with Eloheinu, or with the Moshiach, with his Christ. And they or their leaders, like Balak, now seek to have a confederacy with other neighboring tribalists and then to get the witch doctor or the shaman or like the Nollywood movie, similar to the Nollywood movie, the, you know, the witch doctor or something like that, the, the local African obia man, you understand, to curse to curse this people. So we're coming coming out from America after 400 plus years, returning into the promised land, and we have to be aware of the Balaks, of the Balaks and the Balaams, and, and what happened, and how they eventually did get over, in a sense, on the children of Israel. They corrupted the children of Israel, like black people and the lost sheep have been corrupted even to this present day. But it says, he goes on to say, um, Peradventure I shall prevail that we may smite them and that I may drive them out of the land. They want to drive us out of the land. For I wot that he whom thou blessed is blessed and he whom thou cursest is cursed. But it is a note that that blessing is not the same as the blessing that Yahweh says. It's not the, it's not the Baruch. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a Murek. It's like a graduation sort of a blessing. You understand? It's not the true blessing, the Baruch of Yahweh Eloheinu. And the elders of Moab and the elders of Median departed with the rewards of divination in their hand, and they came to Balaam, and they spake to him the words of Balak. And he said to them, Lodge here this night, and I will bring you word again, as Yahweh shall speak to me. And the princes of Moab abode with Balaam. And Elohim came to Balaam and said, What men are these with thee? And Balaam said to Elohim, Balak, the son of uh, Zephor, or Zephor, king of Moab, have sent to me, saying, Behold, there is a people come out of Egypt which covereth the face of the earth. Come now, curse me them. Peradventure I shall be able to overcome them and drive them out. So, see, we have to understand in, with spiritual wickedness and the whole witchcraft kind of thing, what, whether the one want to call it Ovia or one want to call it Voodoo or one want to call it Santeria or one want to call it something else or one want to call it Roman Catholicism. You, you know, I mean, you could call it a lot of different things or even some of the Mohammedanisms, you understand. Um, you can call it a lot of different things. It's not just limited to so-called just Ovia and Voodoo and on that level because you can see clearly that Balaam is speaking to Yahweh. He's speaking to the true Eloheinu, you understand, to our God. And our God now says this to him, says, um, and Elohim said to Balaam, thou shalt not curse, thou shalt not go with them, thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed, in verse 12. Now Balaam rose up in the morning and said to the princes of Balak, get you into your land, for Yahweh, yod hey wow hey baruch refuses to give me leave to go with you. And the prince of the Moab rose up, and, and they went to uh, Balak and said, Balaam refuses to come with us. And Balak uh, sent yet again princes more and more honorable than they. So they had a little more, um, um, like, gubo. You know, they had some more bribery, you know, in their hands. And they came to Balaam and said to him, Thus saith Balak, a son of uh, Zephor, let nothing, I pray thee, hinder thee from coming to me, for I will promote thee to very great honor, and I will do whatsoever thou sayest to me. Come, therefore, I pray thee, curse me this people. So he needed this witch doctor, this, this obia expert, you understand, to really curse 
you know what I'm saying, Beta is Arayo, just like a Nollywood movie. I don't know if you've seen some of the Nollywood movies. They're very interesting, you know, because they give us a kind of an insight on, to, to what's going on in certain parts of Africa. You understand the, the so-called African movies. Check them out for yourself. But this sounds like the kind of a script for one of these kind of movies where they, where they get their present script from. For it says, for I will promote thee to very great honor, and I will do whatsoever thou sayest to me. Come, therefore, I pray thee, curse me, this people. And Balaam answered and said to the servants of Balak, if Balak would give me his house, Full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the word of Yahweh and Lohe, my God. I'm like, I'm like, but he says, Yahweh and Lohe, in other words, the Lord, my God, to do less or more. Now, therefore, I pray you, tarry ye also here this night, that I may know what more Yahweh will say to me more. And Elohim came to Balaam at night and said to him, If the men come to call thee, rise up and go with them. But yet the word which I shall say to thee, that shalt thou do. Right? But then we have that Balaam rose up in the morning, saddled his ass, and went with the princes of Moab, but we don't have any invitation. See, now this brings us to another matter that we touched on in the audio, um, um, in the, in the audio uh, version of this teaching where we spoke about the difference between the directive will of Yahweh and the permissive will of Yahweh and how Balaam, uh, as, as, a, as a prophet or a, like a preacher for hire, like a lot of the, a lot of the, the pseudo-Christian, um, you understand, um, preachers, pastors, and, and the rest. Maybe you got one in your church, you understand, but these preachers for hire who choose the path of self-will and self-advantage over the word of Yahweh, you understand? And Yahweh could not but gravely disapprove. And there's a very interesting scene that kind of develops. So we need to understand this is the first matter of this particular 40th um, Rastafari Sabbath study, or the 40th Torah or Rit portion, you know, that's known as Balak, Balak, because it introduces now Bela'am, and there's an incident with Bela'am and the donkey. Um, some of you probably know Bela'am and, and, and his jackass, and Bela'am's blessing. But then the fourth part of the summary is the sin of Bial Peor which is very interesting, the sin of Bial Peor. So in this particular Torah portion, there's a couple of interesting um, elements that we need to focus on and to study. Because first of all, this Torah reading is from Numbers 22 and 2 to Numbers 25, Numbers 25 and 9. So from 22 to 25, let us look over what, what, what the basic matters that are contained here. So first of all, we have Balak's invitation to Bela'am. Then we have the Bela'am and the donkey incident, right? Bela'am and the donkey. Then we have uh, Bela'am, the prophecy from the high places of Be'al, speaking of the separation of Israel. Then we have Bela'am making the prophecy from Pisgah, the justification and the power, and the power of, 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 of Israel. Then we have Bilaam, and this is in chapter 23, Bilaam, the prophecy from, from Peor, or one might say Peoria, but Peor, you understand, um, Beor, the beauty and the order of Israel. So it's very interesting, the testimony that Bilaam would give, how in the prophecy of Bilaam, God or Elohim, the true God, testifies on behalf of his people rather than as usual to them. And it is the divine testimony of their standing as a redeemed people in view of the serpent lifted up. So the serpent being lifted up in the wilderness was an important incident that happened in the previous Torah portion, or Chukat, you understand, or yeah, 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 um, yeah. Higu uh, Sarat, was that the yeah, Higu Sarat, the Hukah, which dealing with the particular matter of the Hig, but yeah, Higu Tizaz, you could uh, Tizaz, the the commandment of the law, which is known as a Hukah, 
the hukat, the hukat, or the, from the hak, hak, or hug. You understand? So there's a connection in theme now. So it's because of this serpent that's lifted up, the serpent that's lifted up in the wilderness and the water from the smitten rock, that their state was normally bad. The state of the Beta Israel, like the lost sheep, like black folks, like we say niggas, you understand, is usually bad. You niggas are in a bad state. And this is the reality that testifies to who we are. But this was a matter concerning the discipline of God. In other words, what black folks are going through from such a time to the present time is a matter that concerns the discipline of Ha Elohim and not his judgment in that sense. Now, the interpretation of the prophecies is literal to Israel, and Christianity and Christians take this as types. So Christians will use this as a type, look at our story from Torah as a type for their salvation in Christ, but many of them do not understand the real Old Testament foundation. So we have to build our house on that sure foundation. So when Christ said that ye do err not knowing the scriptures or the power of God, if we would understand in order to be able to apply the power of God to our life individually or collectively as his redeemed people, we need to understand and comprehend the scripture. We need to study and show ourselves approved to him as workmen that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So it's through the Mashiach lifted up, or it's through Christos lifted up, as John chapter 3, verse 14 states, it's through the Messiah lifted up that our standing is eternally secure and perfect, though our state, though our state or our status may require the Abba's discipline, may require the Father's discipline, the Godfather's discipline. Meantime, against all enemies, and this needs to be understood from, from the RSS number 40 named Balak, this needs to be understood, but meantime, meanwhile, anyway, against all enemies, Hashem, the name of the first power of the Trinity in and through Christ is for us. So we have Romans chapter 8, verse 31, if Ha Elohim be for us, then who can be against us? And this is the important lesson that, that the 40th uh, Torah portion named Balak teaches us vis-a-vis -vis and concerning Bela'am, and it gives us the important background um, matter that helps us to understand Revelation chapter 2, verse 14, because in Revelation chapter 2, verse 14, it speaks about the doctrine. It speaks about the doctrine. You understand? Or the teaching of Bela'am. And we need to understand the teaching of Bela'am like, like um, the Nicola Tans in the previous portion concerning the sons of Kore. You understand? So when you, we're reading the New Testament, we have to understand the New Testament in its proper context, and that is based on the Old Testament scripture. Thus, the King of Kings, our Godfather, says that the Bible should not be broken down into pieces, but it must be seen as, as, as all in all. You understand? All in all. So these scriptures are very, very important. But now when we get to chapter um, 24, it continues, you understand? It continues with the blessing. You understand? And then Bela'am has a very interesting prophecy from Beor or Peor. You understand? So we have two matters here. We have, first of all, at the end of Numbers chapter 23, we have the Bela'am, the prophecy from Peor, where the beauty and the order of Israel is spoken to. Then we have the second matter in chapter 24 that now concerns the messianic kingdom, you understand, or the kingdom of the king of kings in his Christ, or Christ in his kingly character. This is very important, what's known as the messianic kingdom, you understand, the messianic kingdom. And then we get to chapter 25, and we only have to go to verse 9 in this particular portion, but we have the doctrine, the doctrine of Bela'am. Because remember, the people couldn't be cursed. The people could not be cursed. But they had to be corrupted. You understand? And part of the corruption was that um, Balak and the Moabites used their heathenish woman 
to corrupt the Beit Israel and to get them out of their Nazrawi or their Nazar status, their, their Nazarene status. So this, here they had an Old Testament Nazarene or what's called a Nazrawian status. You understand? Know, as a Nazar, as that branch separated. They had a separate status. You understand? And Balaam told Balak that I can't curse these people. You understand? Yahweh says they cannot be cursed. But what now the doctrine that Balaam now taught his 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 his, his um his employer, Balak, the king of the Moabites, the son of Zippor, was that if you corrupt this people, get them to come out and party with you. You understand? Let them party with you. You understand? Stick your biatches on them, you know, your woman on them. You understand? Corrupt them. If you corrupt them enough, then they would almost curse themselves because they will be in default of that holy covenant. And in the holy covenant, as we find in Numbers chapter um, 28, verses 15 to verse 68, we see clearly the punishments, you understand, for disobedience. You understand? The, the curses for disobedience. So we can't curse them, is what Balaam, Balaam said to Balak, but I got an idea. It's just like those African movies and Hollywood movies. It's like, like you got, I got an idea. If you do this and this and this and D and D and D, you understand, then it's like, you know, then they will, they will fall on their own faces. And basically you'll get what you want anyway, that they will not be a strong threat to you or to your peoples. You understand? So we as the once lost but now found Beit Israel, as we speak about the Rastafari Aliyah, as we speak about repatriation and coming out of Babylon and coming out of the spiritual Egypt, and we look at the promised land, it's very important, you understand, that we study our manual, our code, our honor code. We study, this is our wisdom. The Ori Torah is our wisdom in the sight of all those nations. You understand? And Israel, at this point, the Beit Israel demonstrated that in part, because when Balaam looked upon them in chapter 23, verses 27 to, 20, verse 27 to verse 30, this is where Balaam, the prophecy from Peor, you understand, or Peoria, you understand, the beauty and the order of Israel, Balak said to Balaam, come, I pray thee, I will bring thee to another place, Peradventure, it will please Ha Elohim that thou mayest curse me them from thence. In other words, <laughs> this is interesting because Balak is really saying, well, maybe it's all about location, location, location. Maybe the location is bad. Pray, tell, like, like pray you. Come with me. I'll take you to another location. And from a different locale, perhaps it's a situation. You understand? It's the particular setting that you can't curse them in. Because when now when you go through this and you study this, you will you will see that you will see that this is what's mentioned, and there's a lot of very important matter that we need to go over. In fact, on some levels of Christianity, and some of you might be familiar with this based on that, that um, there are one the ones who suspect that somebody is putting some juju or some obia, you understand, or some um, witchcraft on them. And some have been instructed to actually look at this particular area in Scripture and derive, in a sense, a talisman, a talisman, from this particular area. You understand? And this is also the particular area where you hear people saying that God is not a man. And they put a period where a comma should be. And you find this in chapter 23 at verse 19 where it says that um, verse 18, to begin this section off, where it says, and he took up his his parable, his, his mishle, his masale, his mythos, his mythology, and said, Rise up, Balak, and hear. Hearken to me, thou son of Zippor. God is not a man, comma, that he should lie. So God is not a liar, in other words. But a lot of people will put a period where a comma should be and say, God is not a man, period. But God is not a man, period. But, God, but no, if you look at it right here in Numbers chapter 23, verse 19, there's a comma there. The idea is still continuing. It says, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Now, you have to remember, this is Balak, the prophet for hire, 
who is giving a testimony on behalf of Israel, but we should not confuse this with covenant commandment and the word of Yahweh directly. In other words, it's going through, it's like a, it's like a, um, like when people say they want to get a second opinion. Balaam is like a second opinion here. In other words, um, he says, or hath he spoken and shall he not make it good? Behold, look and see, and nahu, nahu, look and sight, here it is. I have received Kabbalah, in italics it says commandment, but I have Kabbalah to bless. I have received, I have Makabal to bless, and he hath blessed, and I cannot reverse it. In other words, Balaam, recognizing the, the, the true God, Yahweh Ahad, you understand, know said, I can't go beyond what Yahweh has already ordained, period. You understand? But, but, but let me go on. He says, he hath not beheld iniquity in Yaakov. He hath not beheld um, Amit, uh, rebellion in, in Jacob. Neither hath he seen perverseness in Israel. This is the key where he now makes a doctrine, you understand, to corrupt the people who he could not curse. He could not curse them, but instead use their free will in that sense, do what thou wilt, use their free will against them. So it's really nothing new under the sun when you look at it. He's going on and saying that he hath not beheld iniquity in Yaakov, neither hath he seen perverseness in Israel. Yahweh, his God, is with him. And the shout of a king, Jah Rastafari, the shout of a what? A king. Not the shout of a prince, not the shout of a bunch of people, not the shout of warriors. No, the shout of a king is among them. Elohim brought them out of out of Egypt, the Coptic land. He hath, as it were, the strength of a unicorn or a unicorn. Surely there is no enchantment. Now this word enchantment means there's no kind of obia, there's no kind of witchcraft. Because you sometimes hear folks and folks who says, yes, I know it's Rastafari, it's, but somebody is trying to do something against me. There's no enchantment, period. There's no enchantment. There's no witchcraft against Yaiko. There's no witchcraft against Jacob. You understand? Neither is there any divination against Israel, so fire burn that. There's no divination against Israel. There's no enchantment against Yaakov. According to this time, it shall be said of Yaakov and Israel, what has Yahweh, what has Elohim wrought? What has, what has God wrought? What, what has God done? Not a question, but an uh, um, exclamation point is there. Not a question mark. You understand? There's an emphasis. What has Ha Elohim wrought? What has, and look what he's done. What has he done? Behold, look in sight. The people shall rise as a great lion, as a great Ari or Arye. You understand? As a great Anbessa. You understand? Shall rise as a great lion and lift up himself as a young lion. He shall lie down until he eat of the prey and drink the blood of the slain. Sounds a little similar to Jacob's blessing. In, in, in Genesis chapter 49, in particular, with the tribe of Judah, with the tribe of Yehuda. Now, Balak said to Balaam in verse 25, neither curse them at all, nor bless them at all. In other words, don't do nothing for them. I mean, it's the psychology that goes on today. Well, I won't say good about you. I won't say nothing bad about you. I'm just speaking the truth. You know, you know these kind of nonsenses, psychological nonsenses, but it's exposed. You understand? Before the Holy Spirit. It says that Balak said to Balaam, neither curse them at all, nor bless them at all. But Balaam answered, but Balaam answered now, the, the, the prophet for hire, the preacher, the pastor for hire, he answered and said to Balak, told not I thee, did not tell you, nigga. You understand? Saying, all that Yahweh speaketh, that I must do. I mean, did not tell you? That all that Yahweh says, but Balak is saying, you know, saying, well, don't, bless, don't curse them at all, but don't bless them at all. And then Balaam answers to Balak and says, told not I thee, saying, all that Yahweh speaketh, that I must do. Nigga, did I tell you what Yahweh says goes? Even Balaam, the prophet for hire, the, 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 the local obia man, 
you understand, the local witch doctor, the local shaman, the, you know, local uh, Nollywood African movie witch doctor with the eye thing going on, doing his incantation and divination. Even he is saying, didn't I tell you that all that Yahweh speaketh, that I must do. Now, this now leads us to the prophecy from Peor, you understand, where the beauty and the order of Israel is seen. Now, Balak said to Balaam, come, I pray thee, I will bring thee to another place thinking that maybe it's a change of venue, it's a change of scenery that will make a difference here. Peradventure, it will please God that thou mayest curse me them from thence. So Barak, this native tribalist, is, 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 is so um, la-la, you know, he's so, uh, he, do, he don't get it. He's, he's, he's saying, well, Maybe it will please God. Maybe God don't like this setup because this is how they worship their idols. This is how they worship their demons. You know what I'm saying? Maybe the demon don't like this this setup. You know what I'm saying? I'll get a new setup. You know, the, 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 the will of their gods, the false gods, was determined on the same thing that their own wills were because their, their false gods were not gods. So he's saying, well, maybe we go to another location and that will please God and you may as curse me then from thence. Verse 28, and Balak brought Balaam to the top of Peor and looked toward a place called Jeshimon. Jeshimon. Now, we need to go into these names. We haven't gone into Balak's name. We haven't gone into Balaam's name. And we need to make a note of that. You understand? You need to go into the names. And preferably, the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary is a good starting point, you understand, to really give a, an, an overview, you understand, according to the... The, 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 higher, the higher consciousness approach to biblical hermeneutics or hermeneutics and to Bible study. So now they are looking towards a place called um, 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 Jeshimon. There's this place called uh, Jeshimon. Now, according to what they have here, they say that uh, in, in the margin, they say, or the waste, or the waste. Now, we'll go into that a little bit more in... Um, a little bit more in detail at another time. But moving to verse 29 and 30, Balaam said to Balak, build me. Now, Balaam now is ordering Balak, his paymaster. He's saying, build me here seven altars and prepare me here seven bullocks and seven rams. Uh, it seems like seven is significant even with the witch doctor, right? Now, we know seven is important to Yahweh Eloheinu, to Xeriam Lakachin to Nugusa Nagastar by Tachin, right? But it's also important, you know, to ones like Belaam, you know, to the, to the local or the regional Obiman as well. So he's saying to his paymaster, build me seven altars here, prepare me here seven bullocks, castrated bulls, right, and, 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 and seven rams and seven male sheep. This is what he's asking for. And Balak did as Belaam had said and offered a bullock and a ram on every altar, figuring that, well, maybe we've got to step up our game from another location, and there we can entreat Yahweh to, to curse this people and to allow us to curse this people. Now, as we begin off verse, um, or chapter 24, verse 1, it says, And when Belaam saw that it pleased Yahweh to bless Israel, he went not. So, so when Belaam recognized that it didn't please Yahweh, I'm not going to remember, he had that incident that we talked about in the audio version, the incident of the donkey on the road. You understand where the angel almost killed him if it wasn't for that donkey, that she donkey, that she ass, who basically, you know, got out of the way of the angel that had the sword in his hand. You understand? So now Belaam is seeing, you know, that it didn't please Yah Yahweh, you understand, um, 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 that, that, that it pleased Yahweh to bless Israel. So he didn't go, as at other times, to seek for enchantments. But he set his face toward the wilderness. Now, he sets his face toward the Midbar, the Midbar, the Midbar, the Midbar, right? The Midrebeda. He sets his face toward the wilderness. It's like many of these, um, we could say, Africans in this present time setting their face towards America because it's the wilderness of America. 
you know, the wilderness of North America. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad pointed that out, and that's part of the big picture. And Balaam lifted up his eyes, and he saw Israel abiding in his tents according to their tribes, and the spirit of Ha Elohim came upon him. So look at this. We, we talked about the numbering of the tribes. We talked about the ordering of the tribes, how the community, how there's an order and a discipline to that community. Now, when he sees this large group of people all in order like one big military camp, and then order like one big military camp, I mean, this is, what he, this, this is now, you'll hear, this, you'll hear him speak now. Now, listen to this carefully, but I want you to pay attention to the order, how he he lifted up his eyes, and he saw Israel abiding, dwelling in his tents, according to their tribes and their banners and their organization. And the spirit now of God, the spirit of Elohim, came upon him, and he took up his parable, his mishle, his misale. He took up his parable, and he said, Belaam, the son of Beor, hath said, and the man whose eyes are open, have said. I want you to pay careful attention to this. We're going to touch on what's behind it from the ancient Kamite mythos and the wisdom out of ancient Egypt that will explicate what he's really saying right here because he's now, his eyes, I want you to pay attention to this, this, um, this phraseology. His eyes are open. He's saying the man, he's speaking about himself in the third person. The man whose eyes are open have set. Because people say, well, how could Moses write certain things and he was dead? And how, how would one write about themselves in their own book? Well, look how um, Belaam right here is talking in the third person. Belaam, the son of Beor, have said. And the man whose eyes are open have said. He have said, which heard the words of Ha Elohim, which saw the vision, the Ra'i. You understand the Ra'i of the Almighty of El Shaddai, of Hulum Chayamla, falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. So he fell into a trance, but his eyes were open. And we're going to see how all this is connected with that tree and with that herb. He fell into a trance, but his eyes were open. He said, how goodly are thy tabernacles, O Yaakov and thy tabernacles, O Israel. He's, he's praising, so how beautifully good it is your tents and your tabernacles and how you dwell as a people. As the valleys are, they spread forth as gardens by the riverside, as the trees of lean aloes, which Yahweh hath planted, and as cedar trees, beside the waters. What is he what is Bilaam seeing? He's seeing this vision, this agricultural like a garden he's seen. You understand? He he went he fell into a trance, had his eyes open. He goes on in verse seven to say, He shall pour the water out of his buckets, and his seed shall be in many waters. His seed shall be in many waters, and his king shall be higher than Agog. Agog, we already pointed out that a gog is the pepper. You remember how they say with the Beta Israel in Egypt, there was a pep in the beginning of the Hyksos line, and there was a pepper at the end of the line. And right here now, when he says a gog, a gog is the Hebraic way of saying the pep or pepi, the pep. You understand? A particular king of the Hyksos, of the Hyksonian line in ancient Egypt. So here, Bilaam is saying that the king of Israel shall be higher than a god, than the Apep, than symbolically the dragon. And his kingdom shall be exalted. So we could get, see, see a vision of Georgis sparing the dragon right there, or conquering the dragon, or slaying the dragon, as it were. Verse 80 says, Ha Elohim have brought him out of Egypt. He hath, as it were, the strength of a unicorn. He shall eat up the nations, his enemies. He shall, in other words, it's in the Israel, the Beta Israel. Part of our job is to eat up the nations, eat them up, consume them, burn them, you understand, and shall break their bones. Is this Bible, right? This is Bible, right? and pierce them through with his arrows. I mean, don't, you know, don't blame I and I if there's, like, what says, war. You understand? Everywhere there's, you know, everywhere there's war. But this is the word right here. It says, he couch, 
he lay down as a lion, as a great lion, who shall stir him up? Blessed is he that blesseth thee, and cursed is he that curseth thee. So this, this trance that Bilaam went into, for those of us who know our history from the Torah and, and, and the Pentateuch, we recognize that he's seeing bits and pieces of that, of that blessed stream. You understand? Bits and pieces of that blessed stream. He is saying, first of all, that this people is like a lion, which is a blessing of Judah. You understand? He's saying that blesses he that blesses thee, and curses is he that curses thee, which is a blessing given to Abraham. And now, check this out. In verse 10 of chapter 24, number Balak, Balak, his anger was kindled against Balaam. He's vexed. He's like, what are you saying, man? I wanted you to curse this. I mean, this will, this will be a great little film, a short film. Or I mean, you could just imagine this right here. He is now, he is anger. His anger was kindled against Bela'am, and he smote his hands together. It's like an African movie. They say his anger was kindled against Bela'am, because Bela'am now falls into a trance. He goes, he takes up this parable, this Mishle, this Misale, and he says, check out what I'm seeing. You understand? Know and it's all blessings for the Beit Israel and for Yaakov. And then his paymaster, Balak, the one who hired him to curse the Beit Israel, you understand? Know his anger is kindled against Bela'am. And what does it say right here? We say it's like a Nollywood movie, right? You understand? Know the Nollywood connection, we could go into that. It says that Balak's anger was kindled against Bela'am, and he smote his hand together. Hey! He, he, he did one of those numbers. You, if you all seen the movie, you'll know, you know what I'm talking about right there. And Balak said to Balaam, I call thee to curse mine enemies. And behold, look and see, thou hast altogether blessed them these three times. Hey, Balaam, 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 how many times I call you? How many times I ask you and you bless them these three times? You get it? You, you, do you see what's going on? And, they, and they're so-called Africans. And we're so-called African-American, but we really debate it. It's a rail, so, so you got to know thyself. you got to understand what's going on. Verse 11, I said, Ron, it says, therefore, now flee thou to thy place. He's like, you, you, like, 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 flee. Get out of here. He's vexed. He's angry. I thought to promote thee to great honor, but lo, look and see. Yahweh have kept thee back from honor. He's saying that, look. I thought to promote you, Balaam. Listen how delusional Balak is. He's like, I thought to promote you to great honor, and Yahweh it, it has kept you back from this honor. <laughs> Balaam said to Balak, Spake I not also to thy messengers, which thou sentest to me, saying, If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the commandment of Yahweh to do either good or bad of mine own mind. But what Yahweh speaketh, what he saith, that will I speak. Didn't I tell you that from the, from the get-go? Verse 14, And now behold, look and see. I go to my people. Come therefore, and I will advertise thee what this people shall do to thy people in the latter days. He says, like, like why don't you come with me? And I'm going to advertise for you. You understand? I'm going to market it. I'm going to advertise for you what this people, the Beta Israel, are going to do to your people in the latter days. Now, I want you to understand this, especially I and I so-called black Jews in America, the black Jews of Holland, the African-Americans, the Judahites, the elect Rastafari. Understand this. We are African-Americans, Africa. Well, the Africans don't like us. They don't accept us. They say we're not really African after all this time. Does it really matter? Absolutely not. Absolutely no, because even Bela'am was about to advertise to Balak, you understand, what this people, what we shall do to those people in the latter days. Now, the latter days was talking well, way beyond their time, and is actually speaking about our present time, especially seeing repatriation, the Aliyah, the Rastafari Aliyah, the so-called forward to Africa, the forward to Africa movement. Nothing can stop the hand of time or the prophecy of the King of Kings and his Christ. Now, here we get into the second matter, Bela'am, the prophecy from Peor, where the Messianic kingdom is mentioned. Now, we already touched a little bit connecting with ancient Egypt and the Kamite mythos, where we have the Agag. Agag is the Apepa. 
you know saying, the a pet fly. I think in another video we touched on that, but we can go into more detail on that. But first of all, we want to get our story into context. So Balaam now is going to speak on the messianic kingdom, and he took up his parable. So now here's, here's his second parable, his mis, m misale, bamarinya from the for gutters, or in the Hebrew, a parable is called a mishle. So we say mishle, they say mishle, we say misale. Uh, tomato, tomato, it's one and the same. So now he takes up his parable and he said, Belaam, the son of Beor, have said, and the man whose eyes are open have said. This must be the way he, he starts his rhymes and everything. Verse 16, he has said, which heard the words of Elohim and knew the knowledge of El Elyon, of the Most High, of Lu'ul, the sovereign prince which saw the vision, the ra'i of Hulun Chayamlak, of El Shaddai, falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Ya'ikob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Sheth. The children of Sheth. Who are, who are just like that? Who are the children of Sheth? The children of Sheth are the children of Sethi. Sethi. Seth. Sut. In ancient Egypt. Sut. You know, Sut. You understand? The children of Sut, which are the children of the, that old time serpent. The serpent in the garden. The, the one who said to Eve. The one who Yahweh said, his seed shall be against the, the, his seed shall be against the woman's, you understand, the woman's seed and the woman's child, you understand, or the, 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 the two brothers kind of a thing, the, the evil brother and the good brother, or like Sut and Horus, you understand, that parable right there is being explicated right here because it says destroy all of the children of Shet, you understand, all of the children of Shet. And Edom shall be a possession. Edom, the Edomite, Esau, you understand? Esau and the Edomite, they shall be a possession. You understand? And even in the study of our Rastafari sabbatical um, studies, you understand, and Sabbath studies, it, w this is how, this is all part of the process, how we possess even the Edom, the Edomites. You understand? If the so-called Jews are the Edomites, then it's very clear that we even possess them. You understand? As prophecy says, therefore revelation says they shall come and bow down and know that Yahweh has loved us. You understand? And who we really are. Edom shall be a possession. Seir shall also be a possession for his enemies. And Israel shall do valiantly. Not, not, not just violently, but valiantly, like heroically, like the old uh, Cherui, you understand? Out of Yaiko shall come he that shall have dominion, that shall have the Gizat, you understand? And shall destroy him that remaineth of the city. So those who remain of the city shall be destroyed. And when he looked on Amalek, when he looked on Amalek, he took up his parable and said, Amalek was the first of the nations, but his latter end shall be that he perish forever. And he looked on the Kenites and took up his parable and said, Strong is thy dwelling place, and thou puttest thy nest in a rock. Nevertheless, the Kenite or the Kenite shall be wasted. Until Ashur, Ashur shall carry thee away captive. And he took up his parable and said, Alas, alas, who shall live when Elohim doeth this? Who shall see these things? Who shall live when Elohim doeth this? And ships shall come from the coast of Chittim, or Chittim, but really Chittim and shall afflict Asher, and shall afflict Eber, and he also shall perish forever. Verse 25, to complete the chapter, and Balaam rose up and went and returned to his place, and Balak, and Balak also went his way. Balak had a lot of stuff to think about. You understand? And some of the, the so-called native enemy Africans, 
that don't, do not love we, this people coming out of captivity to reclaim our promised land in Africa and the Middle East, they need to understand this right here. They really need to, and they need to repent. But now, this is leading to the part two where the doctrine of Bela'am is, is spoken of. You understand? And we'll touch on these nine verses and conclude um, this RSS um, um, number 40, Balak, here. Actually, you could say concludes there, but this Torah portion reading is to the ninth verse of chapter 25. And the subset here in the Strong Study Bible is the doctrine of Bela'am. There are three things that we need to understand well, and let's just write this right here. There are three matters concerning Bela'am that one needs to understand well and make a note of it. Make a note of it. Um, concerning um, Balaam, there are three matters. Balaam is the prophet for hire, but he recognizes that Yahweh is the God. You understand? He recognizes that he can't do anything except if Yahweh allows him. The first matter is the way the way of Bilaam, right? The way of Bilaam. That characterizes false teachers. You understand? Uh, they reason in the sense of, well, we'll touch on what their reasoning is. Um, secondly is the error, the error of Bilaam. So we have the first, the men, Ged, 